We're going to get started in just a second. Ed, do we have the live stream going? We're good? Okay, cool. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to SV New Tech. Um, I'm hoping that this is going streaming into the NPRs as well. So if you guys need a break or want more beer, you can always just head over next door. Um, my name is Nisha. Um, I've been running uh, SV New Tech for almost three years with Joe. Um, and I also am an employee of Microsoft, which is why we get to use this beautiful space uh, today for our event. And we were able to let in. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're able to let in 700 people. And we still have some people on the waiting list. So um, this is the largest meetup that we've ever had. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, one other really cool thing to celebrate is that um, last week, we were able to surpass 10,000 meetup members. So we are officially the largest tech meetup in the entire, well, tech meetup in the entire West Coast. So give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah, good stuff. Cool. So um, how many of you guys, how many of you, this is your very first time coming to SV New Tech? You're new, new to the Bay Area? Cool, wow, that, that is a big group. Well, um, every meetup, I like to invite you all to um, meet Joe and I. Um, we like to meet new people in the area and then also introduce yourselves to each other. Uh, this is an excellent opportunity for you guys to get to know each other. Um, quick thing about the format, uh, the way that it works is we have four startup companies. We do a five-minute live demo followed by a five-minute Q&A. So as people are presenting, if you have any questions that enter your mind, write them down. Um, keep them lodged in your brain and then raise your hand and, um, and then you can go ahead and ask that question. Um, but before we get started, we wanna thank our sponsors. Um, first, um, I'd like to bring up Warren Wilby from Microsoft. Um, they sponsored the pizza and the space. Um, say a few words. Hey everyone, welcome to Microsoft. How many of you, it's the first time on our campus? Oh, that is cool. Well, we want you to feel welcome. We definitely want you to come back. We are thrilled to have SB New Tech with us today. We do a lot with startups at Microsoft. I mean, just today, we had a Mexican VC group in doing a demo day here. Uh, some of you saw the other startup event downstairs. Uh, I was over at Stardex just earlier today preparing for their demo day. We do tons and tons of things with startups, and we'd love to be able to help you. Uh, we have lots of ways to do it, Nisha and myself and uh, about 15 other people right in this area do nothing but spend our days trying to figure out how to help startups working with startups. So if you've got a good idea, you want to find out about how to get it on our technology, want to find out how to make money using Microsoft and Microsoft's stores and Microsoft's channels, come to us. We can help. We really, really can. And uh, for the rest of you, we are just glad that you're here. Please feel free to come back. If you have events, we have a great event a venue over in the other building that we let startups use. Uh, so please reach out to us. We're here to help. Uh, and wanted to thank Nisha for putting this all together. SV New Tech is a great organization, and we're glad to have it here. So two more people that we, two more groups we want to thank, and then we'll start with the demos. Um, for, uh, is, is Troy here? Troy, raise your hand somewhere. Oh, yeah, Troy is, um, has been helping us for a year with video. He's actually doing a nice video montage of um, SV New Tech today. So he may uh, stick a camera in your face and ask some questions about why you love SV New Tech and Silicon Valley and all that good stuff. So say nice things. Um, so, and, and also, thank you. Um, and uh, the last uh, group that we want to thank is um, the group that makes us the happiest um, even at the end of the day. It's the beer and wine sponsors. So if Scott and, um, and Aaron, are you guys here? Oh, here. Yeah, cool. Yeah, thank you so much for everything. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Job Spring Partners. Yeah. Thank Thanks, guys. Cool. All right. Well, let's start uh, with the very first demo. First up, we have uh, Sanebox. Sanebox. That's right. We have Dimitri with Sanebox. I don't get the intro. That it's the coolest thing ever. Oh, yeah. And Sanebox is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. So I'm Dimitri, and I am a uh, co-founder at Sanebox. Um, 
Um, we are, okay, that should work. Um, so we are a cloud service that filters out and summarizes unimportant emails and does a bunch of other cool things uh, to help you get to inbox zero and stay at inbox zero. Um, this is gonna be a very odd demo because we don't really have a UI. We have a settings page where you can you know, tune your settings, but you never have to come back to the site. Um, so we work within uh, literally any email client, webmail, or device that you use today to read your email. Um, the way we do this is we basically add folders, which, which I'll show you, um, uh, which is why these folders are propagated to any device, uh, any client that you use. And uh, we work with pretty much every email provider uh, with only one exception of Hotmail, uh, which is we should talk to these guys about later. <laughs> uh, but in, in our defense, this, it's still one of the few pop-only email providers. They don't support IMAP, which is something we should discuss. Um, so uh, we should. Um, but I also want to take this time and kind of uh, just do th three rules that you guys should follow, uh, whether or not you use Samebox. I, I certainly hope that you uh, at least try it. It's two weeks free trial. Um, but you should, you, you should follow those three rules, uh, whether or not you use Samebox, because they will make you suck less at doing your email, uh, <laughs> really. So rule number one, uh, don't let email be your number one priority. Uh, for most of us, it's become like the first thing we do when we wake up, right? Check your email. Uh, this is just really bad, because uh, pretty much if you do any kind of a, a strategic analysis of your time, getting to zero emails in your inbox is not anywhere in your job description, right? And it doesn't get you more money. Um, so what I usually do is I wake up, I check for kind of urgent and important things, and once that's done, I actually get to real work, and then I set dedicated time uh, to check my email. All right, so that's rule number one. Rule number two is not all emails are created equal. Some emails deserve to interrupt your day. Some should, be, some should wait until you have time, and others should just be deleted right away. And now we get to the, the third rule, which is where Samebox actually comes into play. Um, so third rule is you should follow inbox zero rules. Um, most people think that inbox zero is just a, a magical place where you have no emails in your inbox. Uh, but uh, that's actually not true. Inbox zero is a set of five rules um, that you should follow uh, to get to, to zero uh, emails in your inbox. Um, basically, it comes down to one fundamental uh, principle. Never read the same email twice. Right? So when an email comes in, you, there's only five things you can do with it. One is archive or delete it, whatever you prefer. Two, delegate, meaning forward to somebody who works for you. Uh, three, defer until later. Four, if it takes under two minutes, you should do it right away. And five, um, do actual work. So if th that's unfortunately <laughs> the most time-consuming part. So uh, now we, let, let's talk about each five of those and how Samebox helps you uh, with them. So again, um, this looks the same way in Gmail as it does in Outlook or your iPhone. It's just a folder um, that, that lives there. Um, so what Samebox does by default, if you just sign up today, which I know you will, um, you're going to get one folder, uh, one new folder in your email. It's going to be called Same Later. And this is where your unimportant emails uh, go. Uh, so as you can see, it's you know, Twitter notifications, uh, updates, newsletters, um, stuff like that, receipts. Um, if you're a filer, uh, meaning you don't mind looking at many places, you can have up to five levels of importance. You can have a separate folder for newsletters, separate folder for receipts, and things like that. Uh, you can also create custom folders. So for example, I, have a, um, I created a custom folder called Daily Reports, and I started dragging um, some of my uh, you know, sysadmin uh, emails in there. Um, training Samebox. So if you put something in the wrong place, for example, if you put it in Sane later, but you think it belongs in your inbox, just literally drag it to the correct place, uh, and we won't make the same mistake again. Uh, most people don't know that in Gmail, you can actually drag and drop an email to move it. Like that? Hmm? Okay. Um, and so all the, all the Twitter notifications will now, uh, now be in my inbox. All right, so that's number one. Uh, uh, what this lets me do is go through my same later folder a couple times a day. I usually just select all, see what catches my attention, and hit delete. So this lets me process these. Uh, well, and that's the right way to do it, right? Instead of going through your inbox one by one, deciding what's important, all this stuff I really don't need. So I can kind of, by the subject, I can usually tell if it deserves my attention or not. Um, 
so that's uh, that's the first part. That's the uh, deleting or archiving in bulk. So this is really important. Don't treat the same. Uh, don't treat every email uh, like it deserves your attention. Um, number two is uh, delegate. Um, so if you receive an email and you think somebody else should deal with it, uh, you just forward it along. But the problem is uh, a lot of times people won't get back to you, or how do you know if this is going to get done? So with, uh, with us, you can basically, so I, I, let's say I send an email to, uh, I have no idea who this is, but, <laughs> and, and, and I would CC or BCC or in a two line, one week at SaneBox, or uh, tomorrow at SaneBox, tomorrow 9 a.m. at SaneBox, or February 6th at SaneBox. You, you get the idea. And if I don't hear back from John by that time, I get a reminder in my email. So this lets me kind of, uh, number one, delegate and actually send pitches and kind of send important emails to people and know that I'll I not have to think about following up with them. One minute, okay. Um, all right, so that's, uh, that's the delegating part. Um, there's a few other folders you can do. So uh, if you drag an email to say next week, it's gonna reappear in your inbox next Monday. And this is for emails that are important but just aren't actionable right now. Um, if you drag it to Sane tomorrow, it's going to reappear tomorrow. Um, if you drag an email to Sane black hole, uh, you'll never see it again. <laughs> <laughs> so literally, uh, technically what happens, it's trained to your trash, so all future emails will go, will go straight to trash. Uh, but it's effectively like unsubscribing, but much easier. Um, last but not least, uh, Sane not spam. Uh, so do you ever go through your spam folder to fish out stuff that are caught there by mistake? So we do that for you, and we put it in that folder. Um, and last, really last but not least, is uh, it's hard to demo this. Basically, we can um, monitor incoming emails for attachments. Um, and, and you can pre predetermine the threshold uh, for the size of the attachment. Any attachment over that size, we can move to Dropbox, or we just, uh, just release integration with box.net. Um, and we can so put the file onto Box or Dropbox, add the link to that file into the original email, and strip out the original attachment so it doesn't take up all the room in your, um, on your mail server. Cool. Awesome. Um, really quick, uh, if you receive 60 or more emails a day, we have a 52% conversion rate from free trials to paying customers. Great. Uh, so questions for Sanebox. Uh, it starts uh, at, so I'll repeat oh, the question quick, just yeah. so folks can hear it. What's the uh, price point? Uh, there are three price plans. Uh, the cheapest one starts at $2 a month uh, if you prepay for a year in advance. It goes up to 300 a year. Yep. Uh, what's your primary demographic? Um, so this is a great question. So when we started, it was exclusively VCs and entrepreneurs. Uh, now it's literally anyone. So like I just mentioned briefly, so we just did the math, which tried to find what's the correlation between anything and our, you know, potential customers, literally, if you get 60 or more emails a day, which is not that much, 52% conversion rate. So it's anyone with a desk job, I would say. Back there. Yeah, I, I um, was introduced to Sandbox a couple of months ago by uh, Stubalife, where I love it. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about how to use Sandbox in conjunction with email, because it already has a filtering uh, mm -hmm. component to it, so how do those two? Sure. Uh, sure, so 60% of our users are on Gmail, and they prefer to pay us money every month instead of using Priority Inbox for free. Um, so it's, I can say it just works better, it's way more accurate, and the, the way our algorithms work is we actually, when you first sign up, we analyze your entire relationship tree in your, con in your email history, and we look at things like, you know, whose emails do you open, whose emails do you respond to, how quickly you open, how quickly you respond, and the list goes on and on. Um, the important thing is we never look at the content at the body of the email. We only look at the headers. So it's just a way more accurate algorithm. It works anywhere and not just in the Gmail UI. Honestly, I, don't, I have no idea why Google hasn't kicked our ass, but they've been trying. <laughs> Two years later, we're still doing better. So, have one over here. Uh, yeah, great question. So um, if you're filtering, so are you asking whether your filtering rules will continue to work Sorry, I'm not sure I understand. Filter a specific kind of email. Uh huh. Uh, on say email, is that the same for a filter on like a hotmail? I know it just works for hotmail, but it works for other. Does that same filter work for other? 
to the same filter that, that we built? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, so the, uh, we, we do, yes and no, it depends. Um, we, we, honestly, we've we spent two years kind of tweaking the, trying to do it the right way. Uh, if you have multiple accounts, uh, you're going to have to, by, by default. Otherwise, you're training it twice. Exactly. Uh, so it, it depends. Any other questions? There's one there. So the question is, how do you distinguish uh, for the not spam folder? Sure. Um, that's a difficult question. Um, we look at a lot of, a lot, a lot of things. I mean, I can tell you this. Uh, one of our customers recently told us that he was emailing somebody, one of the higher level executives at Google, using his Gmail. And their reply went to his spam filter. All right. So uh, better question would be, why do real emails end up in spam filters? All right. I don't know. Um, so time for one more question. I think you had it first, sir. So you mentioned you uh, collect uh, user relationships. What sort of information are you collecting about an individual user? Um, so we are explicitly, like, we, we don't want any information we don't need. So again, we never look at the content. We never look at anything that, like, we never take possession of anyone's emails. Uh, all the emails are always residing on a server. Uh, so we don't actually, like, first of all, we have no idea who any particular individual is. Right, so we only know the, the real, we can only guess the importance of a particular email to you. Does that answer your question? Sorry, I'm not. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, next up, we have uh, goal sponsors. Just while they're getting set up, uh, quick poll. How many people think they have too much email or more than they want? So there's a, there's a good market for this product, I think, for, for SaneBox. I almost uh, made a New Year's resolution, actually, to not do email this year. Um, I was uh, curious to see if I could make that work. Uh, probably wouldn't jive very well with being an event organizer, but, um, you know, we'll see. So, so next up, we have uh, goal sponsors. Um, we have David and, and Brett. So thanks very much. Thanks. All right. So hopefully this will work. <laughs> Um, so actually, before we, we formally introduce ourselves, a quick show of hands question. How many of you made a New Year's resolution this year? Show of hands. Wow, that's a really, really small number. Wow. Some of y'all are not very motivated. No. Um, the the follow-up question I was going to ask was how many of you kept it? But there are so many hands to begin with. OK, well, that's great. We have one person who's kept their New Year's resolution. Congratulations. You deserve a medal. Uh, there we go. Uh, so, so my name is David Murray. Um, I am funny. Same box just, just came up. I, I'm actually former uh, PM for Gmail. Did IMAP for for Google. Um, and uh, this is Brett Larkin. Hi, I'm Brett. Uh, I used to design mass market fitness games for Ubisoft. And Dave and I are working. And I'm also a yoga teacher. And Dave lost 50 pounds, which is yes. um, why this app is very close to both of our hearts. <laughs> um, so Goal Sponsors is founded on a powerful cross-cultural phenomenon, which is that um, human relationships that hold you accountable are the path to true lasting change. So we are actually packaging that power in a way that's um, relevant, personal, completely personalized, and convenient on your mobile phone. Um, we have traction. We have a couple thousand users, and we make money, so we have revenue. And uh, are we working? Yes. Yeah, we're working. Uh, Dave is going to show you our uh, new user experience. You can check it out. Yeah. So basically, I'm sorry. Can you talk from here? Is this all right? Okay. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So basically, the whole idea here is um, we're packaging accountability and putting it onto a mobile app with a real life human being. As Brett mentioned, studies show that, and this is like real university studies show that the most effective way for a person to succeed at their goal is to have an accountability buddy that they check in with on a regular basis through daily or weekly reports. So if you get goal sponsors, which is an iPhone app you can get on the store today, um, it's free. Uh, you download it, and the first thing you'll be asked is if you want to create a goal for yourself or you want to help someone else meet their goals by being a goal sponsor. So if I wanted to create a goal, you know, we have a nice message here, basically, which you could read later. Um, 
And then you can pick. We support weight loss. We support quitting a bad habit. So examples are smoking, drinking. Um, we model a lot of the, the higher level structure that we do off of, for, especially for the quitting a bad habit, off of some of the principles from Alcoholics Anonymous and related. Um, if you want to start a new habit, for example, you want to floss every day or save money, you can do that. And then there are custom goals. So for example, if you have a real estate quota, you're in the real estate business, and you want to have um, a sponsor who can help you with that, who has expertise in real estate, we have them as well. So I'm going to go through the weight loss side because that's the one that's closest to my heart. There's a video which, which you can watch if you like. Uh, and then uh, enter some basic information. I, I pre-filled some of this. Um, we remember it if the app crashes so that you, know, you don't have to re-enter it again. Um, we're just going to say my height is 5'4", even though it's not. Um, my weight's 165, even though it, it's kind of not. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and my goal is 155. So, uh, and then you, know, you, you, you put some information in here, like you know, why do you want to do this? And this is mainly for your sponsor. Because again, this is not an automated program. It, this is not like a lot of our competitors I mean, it's, it's, there's a real human being you're going to be matched with. So that's why what is here is important. So you say, you know, I want to feel better about myself. You indicate what weight you want to lose. So we restrict people from having, like, unhealthy, lose 15 pound a week, I'm, you know, bulimic or anorexic or whatever kind of diets. We try to keep this healthy. Um, so, you know, we, um, you know, if you want to lose, they say about an average of 1% of your body fat per week is, or of your weight per week is, is reasonable. Um, so if I want to lose that weight, then the next step here is I can pick a sponsor. I can pick somebody that I know, for a, a friend, for example, and then the app is free. I can also pick a professional, and that could be a personal trainer or dietitian, a coach or motivational specialist, or just somebody that's lost weight before. Not everybody wants to be matched with a professional. Some folks want to just be matched with somebody who's just lost the weight and knows how to. So uh, you pick one of these, and you, know, you can see there's a list of people. These are actual people who, you know, you can see any of their profiles. They're real people who, you know, have achieved real things. Um, and each one has a different price point. Most of them are around $15 per month. We take 15% of that. That's how we make money. Some of them are upwards of $50 to $100 a month for the really premium folks who have kinesiology degrees, run their own fitness business, et cetera. Um, so that's the first time experience. And uh, I'll transition to Brett. Yeah, so... Another question is, you know, what if you're not ready to actually work with a coach one-on-one? Because -on -one? that can be intimidating for people. So as Dave mentioned, we model a lot of what we do off um, support groups. We're kind of trying to make support groups sexy and digital and take them into the 21st century without ever using the word support group um, with our users. So say you're intimidated, we just launched a feature called Group Calls. So, for example, in Alcoholics Anonymous, you have a sponsor, but you also have meetings that you can go to. And this community element and, you know, positive um, peer pressure works really well. So we've actually just rolled this out, and we're actually having, um, you know, Dave demoed weight loss, but you can have any kind of goal. And one thing that we've been hearing a lot for users is that they're stressed out. So we've actually um, just rolled out a call for stressed out entrepreneurs. So you can all join it if you like. It's at the end of the month. It's completely free, so you can... Um, join a group call on us, and hopefully at the end of the talk, we can um, show our website, just goalsponsors.com. You can sign up. One minute. Great. So the second half of our, of our demo is basically showing what happens when you've actually logged in. You have a goal sponsor. What's your experience light, like? So you'll have a daily quote every day, which changes. You have uh, the goal that, in my case, it's lose five pounds. I gained some weight over the, the holidays, and now I want to shed it off. Um, and the way that it works is we try to avoid people from being able to cheat. So you upload your proof of weight, and you actually need to take a picture of your weight on your scale. <laughs> so this picture actually gets sent to your sponsor, and your sponsor verifies it. Now, it is still cheatable. People can step on their scale and like push against something. You know, It's like nothing's really foolproof, but um, it strongly incentivizes a person to be honest. So um, my, my sponsor's name is Karen. I've been working there with her for a few months. And we have a chat that works just like any SMS does, except you know, if you have a pay per SMS, you don't have to pay for it because it's all done via the web. Um, and whenever I do a check-in, it sends my weight, as and along with that, the comments that I share. And then you know, Karen you know, shares things like, maybe it's time to reevaluate re -evaluate your goals. So as you can see, it's, even I struggle uh, with, with achieving my goals. Um, if you're a sponsor, you have a sponsor dashboard, which lets you manage folks. It lets you know, what, you know if you need to make an initial phone call with somebody, if you need to review their evidence, et cetera. Yeah, we also see it. this as a CRM tool, basically, for health trainers and professionals as well. And, and, and that's basically it. So uh, thank you for listening. Thank you.
Yeah. Can we switch the AV so we can show the website where they the can background. sign up for the call? Yeah. Um, do you want to start questions? Sure. Yeah, questions. <laughs> Uh, there's not an Android app yet, but that is coming in the next couple months. Oh, uh, the question was, is there an Android app yet? And the question is, it's coming soon. Or the answer is, it's coming soon. Sure. How does Bose market uh, validate the, the professionals? So that's an awesome question. So when we started for our MVP, we wanted to really see if this model worked and could generate revenue, which it can. So we left it open. So we let anyone sign up to be a sponsor. Um, so we have two types of sponsors, sponsors who have credentials and what we call been there, done that sponsor. So someone who's like, I've lost 50 pounds, so I can help you lose 50 pounds too. We're actually going to be changing that shortly because what happens sometimes is people reach out to someone who's, you know, become flaky. Um, so we're going to have a vetting process for sponsors starting um, really soon. Uh, we also have a website. It's goalsponsors.com. That's where you can sign up for any of our group calls, and I encourage you guys to do. We have a bunch of different ones. Um, yep. So we've uh, been bootstrapped. Yeah, so we've been bootstrapped for about eight months, um, and we launched our app about three months ago. Um, and our retention rate varies uh, in terms of people that come from the top line funnel and and register. The set of those people who actually convert to paying customers and stick around for that, like, for around a two to three month period is, is about, it's between five and 10%. It kind of, kind of varies. Um, but so, so the, the reality is, is that the set of people that stick around, although that's small, it's also, you know, they pay money and they support yeah, everybody and else. Of the people who make goals, which I think is a little over 50%, 11% of those convert into paying customers. Right. So, Building that soon. Yeah. So, so the question, just to repeat, was are the, um, do we have an internal rating system right now for the sponsors? And we absolutely want that. We're rolling it out as soon as we can. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we don't, but as we, um, right now we don't. Again, we're pretty lean, so again, the main point of our MVP was just to sort of test this model, but as we add the vetting of the sponsors, that's something I'm definitely um, thinking of adding, we both are, um, in terms of just checking their credentials, making a couple phone calls. <laughs> yeah, oh, good. Yeah, so I mean, a, a good example of this, because I had that exact same concern when I started, and I was like, you know, I already lost my 50 pounds, like I don't need this app anymore. And then the holidays came, and then I needed the app again. So the, the truth is, is that it depends on the goal. So goals that have a fixed time and then they end, you know, you, you may not come back if you maintain that. Most people that lose weight tend to gain it back and then need some motivation to lose it again. And with the other goals too, our suspicion here is that really what we're selling more than just achieving a goal, it's this sense of community. So these calls that we're launching this month, you know, right now they're broken down into like stressed out entrepreneurs or, um, you know, if you want to lose one to 20 pounds, but we're thinking those calls can have a really long tail and this can be even more specific where it's like calls for moms who are a certain age, who want to lose a certain amount of weight, even maybe, you know, in a certain part of the country or something like that. So it's really that community aspect that I think is going to get people coming back, even if they've maybe achieved what they need to. So our sponsors that are good, they um, are always kind of at the top of our list, and we've actually just started promoting them with the calls. So they have a lot of clients, and one of the things we're building out is this uh, PC dashboard, basically, so that clients, um, ideally, we think they'll be, like a sponsor will be able to manage even hundreds of clients at a time. Um, and, you know, I don't think any sponsor is currently, you know, making a complete living off our app, but... Another thing we're really interested in for both the sponsors and our users is kind of this idea of reimagining um, white space. So a lot of trainers, you know, they have spare time between classes or between private sessions. We want this to be something they can do to engage with um, new people and also with their current clients um, in a new way. We have one that's as high as 150 a month, and people pay her happily. So. <laughs> Oh, no, yeah, so th this is just this is the page. Go to goalsponsors.com, and you can sign up for any of these calls. They're, They're all free this month. Thursday's our first call, so. Awesome. Great job.
Cool. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Uh, so next up, we have uh, Jet Freely. Come on up. And you can just plug in there. No, that's mine. I'm just going to have this just for notes. Hello? Hello? Can everybody hear me? Yes? Cool. Okay, cool. All right. So hi everybody, my name is Tanya and this is my co-founder Andrew and we are the team behind Jet Freely. Um, I'd like to start off by thanking uh, SV New Tech and Microsoft. We are actually a Microsoft BizSpark startup program and we highly, highly, highly recommend them to startups who are trying to get off the ground. Um, so what is a problem that Jet Freely is trying to solve? So a typical person, um, when they're trying to plan a trip, they basically go through three different stages. There is an inspiration stage, then there is a planning stage, and then there's a booking stage. While they're going through this, uh, studies show that they go through uh, 22 different sites over nine and a half different sessions. So you'll get inspired and go on a site like Wonderfly. Then you'll open a new uh, browser tab and you'll go on a site like TripAdvisor to plan, plan your trip, get some ideas, and then you'll open another browser tab once you're ready and then you'll book your uh, flight and your hotels on a site like Hayek or Expedia. Um, so basically, the trip planning process um, is still very fragmented and very time consuming. So how are we trying to solve this problem? What we've done is we wanted to have an iPad app that had a travel magazine feel. So travel magazines are always very good at inspiring us, giving us ideas about where to go and getting, getting us excited about those, uh, those places. But how many of us have looked at a travel magazine and been excited about a place and said, I'd love to go there, but never done it because it slipped our mind or because we didn't feel like planning it all out. So what our app is shooting for is to be a travel magazine style application, but you're always only a couple clicks away from actually going on this trip that you're looking at. All right, so let me show you how Jet Freely works. As soon as you start the app, um, you'll see two different um, categories right here on the top. Um, let's say that I have a budget of, let's make us uh, $2,400, um, and I'd like to set my mood. Um, I have a list of different moods here. I can choose from active and outdoors to spiritual journeys. I'm feeling very active, so um, I immediately get a list of very cool, unique, and exotic trips. And these trips are actually curated from our network of travel partners um, around the world, from uh, the UK to Nepal to Zambia, who are experts in the specific destination and who can tell you where are the best places for you to go, where to stay, what to see, etc. So I've just entered my criteria and I want to keep searching through these different um, tours that I'm seeing. So there's a trip, we just saw a trip to cycle through Serbia's remote areas. Now there's a trip to go uh, see Cartagena in the Caribbean. Um, there's a trip where I can go see the Carolyn um, Tea and Spice Trails. And this one looks awesome. This is an Annapurna circuit trek in Nepal. It's considered one of the best treks in the world. Um, and then I can kind of visualize the experience by clicking on these different photos and see what it is that I'm going to be actually experiencing when I'm there. In addition, I can look at the itinerary so I can see you know, what the, this, this trip entails um, over 22 days. And I can also look at the tour details. So um, I can see here that all the accommodation is covered, all my meals are covered, um, my Sherpa is covered, transportation around this area is covered, um, and all of it is for $1,800, which is uh, well under my initial price. Um, you also need to pay for airfare to that specific destination, um, but if you factor in you know, the initial budget that you have, um, it's actually pretty affordable. So Andrew is actually now going to talk about how to make this trip happen. So now that we've gone through a bunch of different trips and we've found some that we're interested in, we have two different options. We can either start the booking process or we can save the trips for later. So let's say I'm looking through these different trips, but I'm by myself and I'm going to go on a vacation with my family. My other family members aren't around right now, so I just want to highlight a couple that I'm interested in to talk to them 
to see what they're interested in. So I can hit the Add to Favorites button, and I can do that on a couple different trips. Um, and then when now, later on, uh, everyone's now around the iPad, and we're all going to look at these different trips. So we hit the View Favorites button at the top, and now we're in a View Favorites mode where it just shows us, it's the same interface, but it just shows us trips that we've saved. So we can look through the details of these different trips and decide on one. And then when we decided the one we want to go on, we hit the Plan Trip button. So now we just have to put our contact information in so that the tour operator can contact us. We can either put it in manually by typing it in, or we can log in through Facebook. I think we're going to log in through Facebook this time. So we just authorize the app. And now we've taken the email address and name from Facebook, and we just have to, uh, we want the user to validate that yes, this is the correct information. And we hit yes, get me on my way. And now the information, the contact info is sent to the tour agent who will contact the user within 24 to 48 hours. And at that point, the agent will um, make any customizations that the user wants for that trip, and then we'll plan and book the trip for them. So basically, um, the vision for Jet Freely is in just a few minutes, you can get a very fun, exciting, engaging way to plan your travel without any he headaches. Um, and you can also have a much more personalized and customized experience. Um, so our app will actually be live at the end of February. If you're interested in checking it out, please go to jetfreely.com and enter your email address and we'll notify you when it's ready. So that's it. Thank you. Questions? Uh, I saw the woman in the pink actually, her hand go up first, so. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then you're basically providing a portal to your travel agents to the travel agents yes. that then can essentially um, bid on That is correct. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Yep. Um, so the question was, this is a, the type of play that we're doing. We're actually B2B in that we're working with tour agents. Um, we actually have over 40 tour agents um, we're working with. And they're actually on a wait list because we haven't had time to go through and enter every single one of their tours. Um, and then we're taking those tours and putting them into a distribution channel that other people, other consumers see. So it's kind of a no-brainer for the tour agents and operators. Um, they're pretty excited about this. But you need to build the brand, right? Yes. So that's agreed. Yep. So that's the next hurdle in this lovely startup journey: is building the brand and getting people to acquire, uh, getting uh, people to use it. Yeah. Um, I saw his hand go up. Yes. Interesting. Um, we actually have some thoughts about doing, um, like, if you want to go and do something exciting this weekend, um, we can actually provide some last minute trip ideas that our uh, tour providers will do. I haven't thought about bidding or creating a marketplace, um, but that's an interesting thought. Uh, oh, so the question is, are we going to do bidding um, of some sort between our tours? Um, this man who forgot his question in the last round, but hopefully didn't forget it this time. What was, what is it? I don't really remember. I was just thinking, were you, were you guys planning to do bidding the opposite way where a user puts in what they want, and then the tour guys bid to like down, like they can kind of bid down the price. So the question is, are we going to create a marketplace where the user can enter what they want, and then the tour guide can then, um, the tours, uh, can then, tourist providers can then compete against each other um, to, um, create a trip. We actually are not trying to do that. We specifically wanted to avoid that space. There's other, there's travel websites that do this um, where you enter your criteria and then travel agents comp compete against each other for um, specific, with a specific price. We are focusing on very um, unique and ex exotic trips um, and we want people to go through them in, in, in a rich immersive way and see if this is something that they want to do. So we're not looking to pit tour agents against each other. We're looking to highlight what makes them so special. We think there's a lot of really cool destinations out there that people didn't even know existed. So we want people to get really excited about all the different places they can go. Yes, sir. You had your hand up. Yeah, well, I, I guess in that same sense, then what is the unique value proposition for a tour operator or people like that to come to you, I mean, over others? Do you have a, is your market information? Um, that's a great question. So we actually um, we went to a travel conference in LA and just you know through cold calls and through talking to people at the conference, it was pretty much a dead stop. I would say success. There was no selling really. Um, what we discovered was with these travel and agents and tour operators, they're very good at 
working on a specific tour, but they aren't really good at marketing themselves and getting the word out there. So when we told them about the idea and they heard about, you know, it's on an iPad, we take care of getting eyeballs to see their tours and we do it in a rich, immersive way. It was like, done, sign me up. Um, and they actually, several of them were like, great, we'll give you a referral fee. Like we didn't even have to negotiate terms for this. They were just like, put us on your iPad up and we'll pay you. Most of these tour operators are, are niche. They have a specific thing they're really good at, but they're not a big enough company to have a, a, you know, a good online presence or tablet presence. So we're providing that mm -hmm. service to the tour operators and they're giving the user a modern searchable mm -hmm. um, interface. Um, is there, do we have, okay, I'm, more time. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh -huh. You must certainly have a navigation Uh, so, actually, the tours that we have here are from different tour providers. Um, so... Do you mean as part of a single trip, multiple tours? Is that what you're asking? No. As a, for the user, a seamless experience how to choose a tour. And it might be a very different providers. So tours should look similar. Yes. So, you, you know, regardless... So, these are different... Do you understand? I was just going to repeat the question. I'm not sure I quite understand it. Uh, the question is... What are we doing if there's similar tours uh, by different providers? Is that right? That would be similar to the question. Okay, I'm sorry. navigation seamless. Uh, hmm. So we have, I'm not sure I understand the question. We, we, we do feature lots of different trips from different tour operators in the same search. So I'm not sure if that answers your question. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm not quite getting it. Mm -hmm. outdoors and so forth. Are you, first of all, are you self-categorizing or are they categorizing? And then secondly, mm. do you provide the view, I mean, do you say put pictures here and we'll take care of the experience? Um, I think that's part of the question. It's a good question. We have the same UI for every single trip. Um, and that's on purpose. So we want, on to, we want to provide a seamless yeah. interface so it doesn't look like it's different providers. So the tour provider gives us uh, pictures. Um, we also, if they don't have good pictures, we also help them. Uh, create or get pictures based on uh, the itinerary that they've given us. Um, they provide us with um, the itinerary. So um, this, you know, this guided, I don't know if you can see it here, this, this tour itinerary that you can see here, they provide us and tour details they provide us. They also um, provide us with, uh, they also provide us with the price. Um, so essentially they're competing on um, they're all on the same stage. They all were requesting the same thing from every single tour agent, and the content of the experiences was was what we believe will make someone choose one tour over the other. But to be clear, it's not the tour operators that are actually pushing content to our app. We we are manually making it so that the, the experience is presented the same way regardless of the tour operator. Mm -hmm. cool. And that's uh, all we have time for. Right. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Last but uh, definitely not least, we have uh, Gain Fitness here tonight. To talk about their new app. So, so the, it's going to have audio as well. Okay. Oops. Sorry. I think you might have to mic it. Yeah. Maybe mic it with the handheld. Okay. I thought it worked. Okay. Hmm. Testing. testing, testing. Sounds good. So I'm going to play a quick little video here to introduce Gain Fitness. But first thing I want to say, I love goal sponsors, feature partner, and the, the place they're at, I would describe us as a little bit downstream. So 
We are a solution for actually guiding you through your workouts when you do them. And audio is not working. Just play it. Can I do the mic instead? Yeah. All right. There's a lot of audio in our app, actually, so I'm going to play it with the mic instead. Right, so it's time to get fit on your terms. We all know fitness is a really complicated thing. There's the motivation aspects, there's what do I do, there's the accountability, and Gain Fitness is here to take the, the questions of what do I do to reach my specific goal um, off the table and make it really dead simple to get a customized workout that a personal trainer would give you based on who you are, what's your body type, what's your fitness goal, how much time you have, and make a highly customized workout that actually guides you through it. So I'm going to demo some features of our current app, and then I'm going to give you a little bit of a sneak peek of some new apps that we're submitting to Apple this week. So the experience starts here with defining your goal. So each person has a very different goal in mind and can have a different experience with the app. Uh, your general goal might be to lose a little bit of weight. It's after the holidays. We know we don't do resolutions here, but you know, <laughs> still might want to trim a little bit. Uh, and then where do you want to work out? Some people might have a gym membership. Other people are traveling and on the go. Uh, so you can work out maybe in a hotel room. And then how much time do you have? So this is a really great feature of Gain Fitness. This really separates us out um, from the other fitness-guided mobile apps out there that we customize workouts completely based on how much time you have, anywhere from five to 90 minutes. So, and I've actually started doing this with my own fitness, is working out in smaller chunks, maybe once or twice a day, um, 10 minute chunks. And then you select your body type, uh, the body parts you wanna work. So let's just say we wanna work our full body. Muscle focus is optional. Let's say we'll stay balanced for now. Then it's gonna take you to our uh, digital personal trainers. We've essentially worked with uh, different top trainers that have different workout styles, everything from bodybuilding to yoga, and we've brought them into the same app so you can access whatever is both appealing to you from an interest and activity standpoint and also really match to your goals and your time and your resources. So this one recommended the Road Warrior. Uh, there's Gain Strength, which is classic strength training. There's some yoga stuff. I'm going to try this Circus Strength because this looks really crazy and fun to me. Um, so from there, it's taking all your criteria into, into account, and it's building customized workout um, from the algorithms we've developed with these trainers. And this one's called Controlled Circus Strength. So I'm going to take a look at what it is. And here's the workout overview. It shows you all the exercises to do. Notice uh, this one is a two-round circuit. It's giving you a 60-second protocol, a 10-second rest, and it has all the details. And then the fun part begins. I'm going to press Start Workout and the action starts. Let's do this now. Forward kick, left side. Forward kick, 20 reps. Begin. Here we go, stand tall, raise your arms up. So it counts all your reps for you and awesome. doesn't let you slack. Focus, now stretch and stretch the shoulders. All right, up next, squat kick. One of my favorites. Squat kick, 20 reps. Begin. Squatting down, kicking the legs, and throwing the arms up. Side to side, switching sides as quick as you can. Here we go. So this is actually uh, Reed Taylor, creator of Method Yoga. He's one of the top trainers and boot camp instructors in San Francisco. And we work with him to bring his style of workout training to a mobile app. 
and it's his voice, his pictures instructing you through the exercises. It's all him. Um, the exercises and, and durations and sets and reps also adjust based on your level. So right now I have this on advanced, but if you're a beginner, it might have you do only uh, four or five reps of this exercise, or it might have you do an easier version. So say that you know body weight training and circus arts is not really a thing. Um, you might be more of a weight room type of person. So we've got a trainer created by D.H. Kiefer. He's a, a pretty common, uh, frequent writer, men's fitness, muscle and fitness, and he's all about hitting the weights and getting big and strong. So here's a workout from Kiefer. He's got your deadlifts, your squats, your one leg deadlifts, and I'll start this one. Sumo deadlifts. Okay. Sumo deadlifts, eight reps. So a nice thing about the resistance training is I can add how much weight I did for that exercise, and then I track and said I did it. It's going to actually time my rest and tell me how long to rest to optimize the workout goal that I'm going for. Uh, we also track everything that you do. So based on the number of uh, clicks and interactions and the amount of time you're in the workout experience, we're going to... Um, Calculate your percent completion, calories burn, your work units, which is a physics major for how much weight you move one foot in distance. And it knows here, in this case, we were kind of playing around in our chair and didn't really do anything. Um, so to kind of wrap up, we've got eight different trainers in the App Store. Um, within Gain Fitness App, we just launched... I have two microphones. I'll, I'll keep this one. We, we just launched five of these trainers within the past six or so weeks. And we're in the process now of submitting all these trainers to Apple uh, because these are actually premium upgrades within the app. But we're publishing them all um, as separate apps very soon within App Store. So you're going to be able to go and find the trainer that you really like. Uh, say it's the Road Warrior. And we're going to have new experiences and make a freemium version of each of these different apps. So that's Gain Fitness. Uh, we bootstrapped for a while, and then we raised uh, a seed round about a year ago. Yes. Uh, the question is, are you planning to connect with fitness sensors? Uh, we are. It's, I don't have any launch dates, but we're talking with folks at places like Fitbit, Basis, and Lark. And um, I really love what they're doing. I really love the applications to integrate sleep data and activity data outside of the intense uh, kind of weight room training style stuff. Have you evaluated we have good lawyers, and we've looked at that stuff. Um, we have some pretty heavy terms, terms and conditions that you agree to when you sign up. It's a risk, but also. Um, there's a lot of risk to being inactive and uh, the healthcare costs associated with that. So <laughs> I'm an optimist, but <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's something to keep in mind. Oh, sorry, the, I'll repeat the questions going forward, but that was about um, risks of, associated with liability, dropping a weight on your foot, um, tearing a muscle, which I did a month and a half ago and it was very painful and it's uh, definitely a risk. Great question. Um, our users use it in a number of different ways. A lot of people, so it's about half people using it at the gym and half people using it elsewhere, at, at home or in a hotel room or in the office. And when people are sort of on their own, not in a public setting, uh, most often they're just placing it on the floor or they're placing it on a dresser in front of them. Uh, when you're at the gym, people are putting it in their pocket or my favorite way, most convenient is to wear an armband or even a wristband. And it's hard to tell with the demo, but we engineered the audio experience to be completely guided so that um, the app is more of the pictures, the motion pictures are more of a reference to look at when you don't know that exercise. Once you know it, you put it away, and the rep counts and the timers and the uh, metronomes all give you the guidance of what to do. In the back. Y 
yes, you can play music. It integrates well with Music Player, Spotify, Pandora, all those really well. It actually ducks the music when uh, the trainer comes in with uh, an instructive cue. Anyone else? Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, the trainers that we co-create the programs with, a lot of them have their own followings. Um, the last one I showed works, writes a lot for uh, muscle and fitness, men's fitness, for example. And we are talking with, with media outlets like that, yeah. Uh, it's about to, yeah. Currently, we started off with just one app, Gain Fitness, and all of the trainers exist within that app as premium uh, in-app purchase upgrades. But we're launching each of the trainers as separate entities in App Store. Um, Yeah, so the question is, why are we breaking out trainers into separate apps? It's a great question, and we've thought about it for about a year and decided or realized, this is based on data we looked at on our marketing, that uh, the way that people discover apps in the App Store, they're looking much more for a niche thing. So they would search for yoga and find apps that say, you know, this yoga, that yoga. Gain Fitness wouldn't appeal to them because they don't know what it is. So... It's really a, um, you know, ASO, they say App Store Optimization, the new SEO. It's, it's kind of along those lines. Uh, circuit training is integrated as part of the trainers. So really the trainers have different workout styles. Some of them like straight sets, some, some of them like circuits, uh, and a few of the trainers do do circuits. We also have an edit functionality, which I didn't show. But you can add your own circuits if you have a list of straight exercises, and you can put those into a circuit and play them that way. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, what led us to choose iOS first? Um, at the time that I started the company, it was just sort of the everyone was thinking iOS first. Uh, things have definitely shifted now. The market numbers are a bit, you know, starting to skew towards. Um, Android and, and other uh, systems. We want to go on Android and we have plans to very soon, but um, at the time, based on the trends and also the fact that iPhone users tend to be a little bit more uh, tech savvy and a little more willing to pay, those were sort of the, the factors that let us get there first. One more question. Do we see this replacing personal trainers? This is my favorite question. The answer is no. Um, as the goal sponsors folks know, it really takes a person to um, give you a sense of account. You know, people want to be accountable to a person. They don't necessarily want to be accountable to a device or to even you know uh, some 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 content or or, or some video. So I believe that there is definitely ways for trainers and for a automated workout training device like ours to really work hand in hand together. And we're still trying to figure a lot of those out, but um, we talk to trainers a lot, so we, we, we understand their needs uh, definitely, and that's definitely a part of the future. Thank you, guys. Uh, so that wraps it up. Um, so we have the uh, the space next door. Uh, but one quick announcement. Um, if you are the founder of a, an interesting startup and you're interested in presenting at SV New Tech, please head to svnewtech.com uh, slash apply to demo, or there's a giant red button. Um, we're always looking for new companies. Uh, we appreciate all of the applications. So, um, so we'll be next door. I think all of the uh, presenters you just spoke to will be next door networking. Um, there's probably more, more beer, more, more wine, that kind of thing. So have a good time. Thanks for coming out.